DC Young Fly gave a speech, and it was the first time he had spoken in public since the news broke. And a lot of people on the internet were talking about some conspiracy theories. They were saying that he sacrificed her. They even pulled up quote unquote evidence to suggest that. They said that, you know, he's part of the Illuminati. She was his blood sacrifice to get put on. And ironically, the 85 South show just got a Netflix special. And it reminded me of this saying in Nigeria that goes, no wonder the devil is black. What's interesting about that is as black people, we have been convinced that we are the personification of evil. We have been convinced that anything bad, we are at the bottom of it. So Jay-Z is the head of the Illuminati. DC Young Fly, a comedian from Atlanta, Georgia, who just got some money, he must have sacrificed his child's mother to make it in life because for some reason we can't fathom the fact that Black people are capable of anything worthwhile without some nefarious means, without some pact with the devil. And I just would encourage us to investigate some of our biases. I would encourage us to investigate why is that more believable than this tragic thing happened to this young man and to this young woman and to their young family. One of the things that people said is that he wasn't emotional enough during his speech. If he was really sad about her passing, he would he would have cried. He wouldn't have been so clear or eloquent in his speech. And unfortunately, reminded me of the way that we have been socialized to police black men. I think it's clear where that comes from. We've always policed black men. But in the modern context, I think what we do in our communities, we police black male emotions. On the funny side, you'll see memes talking about as a man or being a man, why why do you have a birthday? As a man, why do you order dessert? You know, stupid stuff like that. But beneath the surface, there is this sense of masculinity needs to look a certain way. And that certain way tends to be a way that serves femininity, a way that satiates women's desire or women's, the lens that women would like to see us through. I want you to be tough when I want you to be tough and how I want you to be tough. I want you to be emotional when I want you to be emotional and how I want you to be emotional. I don't want you to have agency over your emotions or your disposition. I don't want to have to learn about who you are or how you are because I would rather live with my assumptions of you, black man. She was having a mommy makeover, which I believe includes a BBL. The internet is blaming men, blaming DC. They're saying that men have created unnatural pressure on women to fit a certain aesthetic. The Coke bottle shape, the Instagram model shape, the video vixen shape. And that pressure is what's inspiring so many women to risk their lives to conform. My prediction in about 10 or 15 years is you're going to have a bunch of young ladies. And when I mean by young, I mean about 30, 35, because I still consider young, who are going to be disfigured. They went out and got these veneers that nobody told them they're going to have to redo in about 15, 20 years. So now they got chips and gray and brown all on them. There's going to be a bunch of young ladies who didn't keep the weight off like they were told to. They are not in the gym like they were supposed to be. A couple of them are going to get pregnant and the fat from pregnancy that just happens naturally, it's going to start growing in weird places and in weird ways. The butts are going to start to sag and not match their legs and they're not going to have the money to fix these things or redo these things. You're not as cute as you used to be so you don't have a sugar daddy. Only fans is not around. You know, technology doesn't stay like that. There will be no stimulus checks. It's going to be really bad in a couple of years. I interviewed recently a young lady who had had a BBL procedure, and she talked about researching about this procedure since she was 13 years of age and all the safeguards that she put in place to make sure it would go as smoothly as possible. The recovery period would would be nice and still the risk of her potentially losing her life. But the reward on the other side of getting the body that she always dreamed of. In Jackie O's case, 
She started out as a model. She started out as a wild and out girl on the show that DC starred in. And that's how they met. But at that time, before she had children, she had a really nice body. As a father now, I understand, and you know, watching my daughter's mom, I understand the toll that takes on you psychologically from having a nice body or at least a body that you liked and you were happy with to kids doing their thing and making your body look less than ideal. And I understand the pressure that that puts on women, especially in a modern day when you turn on the computer, turn on the TV, and you're seeing these Coke bottle, these carved out women. What I will say to women is, contrary to popular belief, real men still like real women. Real men like women's bodies as they're supposed to be naturally. Real men are understanding of the changes that happen as a woman goes through you know, her menstrual cycle, the childbirth process. And all we ask is, you know, maintenance. But these unrealistic, pseudo-feminine aesthetics that are being pushed, real brothers don't like it. You know, it screams fake. It screams superficial. It screams I'm for sale. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm also not with the body positivity movement that tells you you should present any version of yourself to the world and they're supposed to love you for it. I still believe you should take pride in your presentation. I still believe you should optimize the things that you have. You should be in the gym. You should be eating properly. But if you're a woman who puts her entire self-worth on her aesthetic, you will gravitate towards and attract a certain type of guy. And unfortunately, with that kind of guy, you're not going to find longevity because there's going to be a newer, tighter, younger model that comes out at some point. And he's going to trade you for her. So you have to ask yourself, this body modification, this BBL that I'm doing, who is it for and what, what are the costs? Not just the monetary costs, but what are the costs to my mental, to my relationships? And is this the world that I want to be in? The world of the superficial? The world of the over the top? The world of the Kanye personality? Or do I just want a wholesome, good man who's going to be a great father and a great grandfather? He's going to care that my skin is popping, that I smell good, that I'm intelligent, that I'm helpful, that I'm feminine, who's not just going to view me as an object, a trophy. But those are the type of guys that you would attract with BBLs. Or even if you attract a good man, he's immediately going to be in the mode of, oh, I just want to sleep with her because you just commodified yourself. And I know the pathology of women is, okay, if I can just get my foot in the door, I can convince him that I am all these other things. But the reality is, is when a man puts you in a box, it's very hard to get out of it. So I would encourage women to lead with their best attributes. And hopefully their best attributes are what's in their mind and their personality and their disposition, not their body, not their breasts, not their ass, not their titties. Whether... You do a BBL or not, age and gravity is going to take it away. You may have a valid reason to lose your mind, but that don't mean it's right. Because I got a valid reason to, to go buck wild, and, but that's not going to get me and my children and my family nowhere. They got to see the strength so it can be instilled in them. The reason why DC Young Fly was able to compose himself during that speech is because as a man, especially a man coming from where he comes from, death wasn't something that's foreign to him. Death wasn't something that was unfamiliar. For people who are expecting some kind of performative masculinity in a way that they find palatable, they don't take that extra time to think it through. Where he's coming from, he's had friends that have died. He's had family that's died. He jokes about it sometimes how his siblings are old enough to be his grandparents. So some of those things should be considered when we look at how he chooses to grieve. And especially as a man, especially as a man who is expected to be strong, 
expected to be a warrior, to be calloused emotionally, to now all of a sudden be expected to be emotional exhibitionists like women are celebrated for being, I don't think it's right. I think this situation and the commentary coming out of it is a great opportunity for us to now question our biases and our expectations and our projections on one another, and particularly black men. If you want to see more of this, please click that like button. It helps tremendously. And share this to somebody you think would gain value from the message. And hit that subscribe button as well. Peace out, y'all.